All right. So welcome everyone to the November 2021 health, healthy cooking demo. Today we've got Thanksgiving options um, that are on the healthier side. Um, so some health friendly feast options. We've got Jordan Setzer, um, who is a uh, nutrition and family sciences dietetic intern with us today. She always leads these. Uh, she's our cooking host, if you will, for today. Um, she's also got a helper. Andy Montgomery is there as well. Um, and Andy is also a dietetic intern here at UCA. So thank you both for being here today. And I will uh, give the floor to you. Thanks so much. Thank you, Mariah. Hello, everyone. Um, I'm so glad you're joining me for another cooking class. Um, I've said this previously, but we do these cooking classes in efforts to be able to apply some of the stuff that you're learning in your support groups and in your um, instructional or your educational sessions. So today, like Mariah said, is our Thanksgiving session. And so I'm going to be preparing a few dishes that uh, we usually get to eat during the Thanksgiving holiday, um, but are usually packed with sodium, fat, sugars, um, things that we want to try to decrease when we're trying to improve our health. So uh, with that being said, the first thing that we are going to make is green bean casserole. A lot of us are used to our grandma's green bean casserole or just a childhood recipe um, that usually uses cream of mushroom, soup and um, lots of fat and lots of sodium. And so today we're gonna be trying something new and substituting um, a lot of those processed canned foods um, in order to make sure we decrease our sodium and um, still get the same flavors that we want. So let's get started. The first thing we're going to add is just some oil and my pan is being preheated already. We're just gonna add a little bit of olive oil. Okay, and I've, I've preheated the oven to 350 degrees um, for later. And I've already, you'll see in the recipe booklet that you get, I've already made um, our sauteed onions, which you can see here. Those take about 15 minutes and you wanna make sure they get kind of translucent or a little bit yellow. So I'm just gonna go for that. You can mince your own garlic, but I'm just gonna add just a little bit of the pre-minced garlic. And I've chopped some onions, you can see here add those as well. And we're just going to let those cook for about two to three minutes. Okay. Stir that around a little bit. You do not want your garlic to burn. It will smell really bad and it will taste very bad. Okay, um, so what we're using today are fresh mushrooms. If anyone does not like mushrooms, you can easily leave those out. Um, but using fresh mushrooms is just a great way to avoid using the canned cream of mushroom. And like I said earlier, just decrease that sodium level. So I'm gonna add these, actually we're gonna turn this up. Jordan, I'm gonna jump in for just a second and remind all the audience that you're welcome to uh, put questions in the chat or comments. We're happy to field those as Jordan presents. Said I was going to add them, but I'm gonna let them cook a little longer. So if you can see here, I think, let me turn the lights. Okay, that's better. They're getting kind of translucent, which means they are cooking. All 
All right, now I'm gonna add the mushrooms that I have sliced. And two tablespoons of water. So I just already put it in this cup. And I have this about kind of medium high heat right now. So once we add all of our ingredients for this um, soup base, we are going to put this over the green beans. But this is also an awesome idea for you to use um, with your turkey as your gravy or over your mashed potatoes. Um, it's again, low in sodium, but has a lot of good flavors. And we're just gonna let that sit for about two more minutes. Over to my left, I already have a casserole dish that's been sprayed down and I've already boiled my green beans. Um, fresh green beans are an awesome addition instead of canned green beans, just because um, they are low in sodium. But if you do only have canned green beans, then you can absolutely just drain them and then rinse them off and that should get rid of some of the sodium. And that's with any canned vegetables. Okay. So while that's finishing up, I'm gonna go ahead and dump my steamed green beans, so my boiled green beans, into my casserole dish. And this is a smaller recipe than the one I've given you in your pamphlet, just because they're, I'm just preparing it for you guys today. But obviously when you are preparing this for your family members, you can double it or do whatever you need to do to um, adjust the serving size. Okay. Now the cheese are cooking. While Jordan plates that, I just wanted to point out there's some really excellent questions coming in in the chat, and Dr. Landry is fielding those and doing great. a great job. Um, also wanted to mention, I did post the recipe booklet. That's what Jordan is referring to when she says your booklet or your pamphlet. Um, that's available in the chat as well, and I'll post it again here in just a moment. We have a, seriously a great cameraman with us. <laughs> okay, so here, I'm gonna try to get this in the shot. Okay, I have three tablespoons of flour already um, measured out. And then I just went ahead and mixed um, the thyme in there with it. So I don't have to do two things. I just do one. Um, oh, I was going to say, so if you have any gluten-free people in your family, feel free to use any other kind of flour, um, like gluten-free flour or nut flours. And 
substitute that. We're also going to be using skim milk today. Um, so again, with the gluten-free and the dairy-free, you can absolutely substitute this for any of the nut milks like almond milk and um, oat milk. Just make sure that you get the one without sugar because that would just taste terrible. So I'm just gonna sprinkle this over. Like that. And it smells really good. I wish you guys could smell it. I'm just gonna mix this. Okay. And now I'm gonna slowly pour in about one and a half cups of milk. So. And this is skim milk. Okay. I'm just gonna mix this until it starts getting a little thick. If you notice that it's not getting as thick as you would like, you can always add more um, flour to it or less liquid. And if you're wondering right now, my stove top is at a seven out of nine, so medium high heat. I mentioned earlier too about the gluten-free um, flour. We will be using breadcrumbs for this recipe. But again, feel free to get gluten-free bread and toast it and then make your own breadcrumbs out of it. And also, I think they actually do have gluten-free breadcrumbs, so that would work as well. Continuing to stir. I'm actually going to add a little more flour to this just because it's very liquidy right now. And the liquid, the liquid is fine. You don't want it like a pudding, but we do want it kind of like that, um, like that kind of canned cream of mushroom soup. Okay, actually, we are just gonna pour it over because this will this will thicken as it is in the oven. So do you want to do this? So I'm just gonna pour it over the green beans. I'm gonna add my breadcrumbs. This and then top it with these already, um, what's the word? Sauteed onions. Okay. So obviously it does look very different than um, green bean casserole that you're probably used to seeing, but it's very good. Okay, now I'm just gonna pop this in the oven for 15 minutes. And that's at 350. Okay, our next dish that we're gonna make today is sweet potato, roasted sweet potatoes. 
I was about to say sweet potato casserole. Um, we are so used to seeing sweet potato casserole at Thanksgiving dinners and lunches, but a lot of times these come with high sugars and um, marshmallows and brown sugar and things that we don't really need because sweet potatoes are already sweet. So I'm just gonna show you, I've already made it um, so that you can, you're able to see the end product because this does take a little longer than the time we have here. But I'm just gonna show you how to cut it and the first couple steps that I did um, to get what we have that I'll show you in a second. So I've already scrubbed the potato really well. I'm just gonna chop off the ends. And then I'm gonna, use my hand to cut it. It can be very dangerous. You can peel the potato or you can leave it with the skins on. I'm gonna leave, just for time purposes, I'm gonna leave the skin on. So make sure your fingers are far away and that your knife doesn't really leave the cutting board. Okay. And then I'll just take these, this, just to where we have one to a half an inch cubes. Okay. And I will toss it in a pan. You can use a pot or you can use a pan depending on the size of your um, meal. I'm gonna use a pot or a pan. Okay, so again, just for time purposes, I'm gonna shrink the size of it. Okay, so we're over on the stove again. It's on medium heat and I'm gonna combine it with a little bit of olive oil. You have the recipe, so you can use those measurements, but I'm just eyeballing it because I am using less. Okay, so I'm just gonna toss it around. To where the sweet potatoes get kind of covered. And when you saute them, you're gonna wait to add the seasonings and everything until the potatoes are super bright orange and you can kind of hear them cooking. So obviously not right now. And to speed things up, I always like to use the lid just to trap the heat. So that's gonna cook. And then we will add our salt, our pepper, saute some garlic right next to it and then toss in some dried rosemary with it. And we'll toss that around and it will cook um, for about 15 to 25 minutes, depending on the size of the sweet potatoes that you cut. And it will end up looking like this. So very yummy. So we don't have to add all of our extra sugars and everything, and it still ends up getting the flavor and the colors that we want. Um, while still keeping that those vitamins and um, not overcooking them. Okay. Our last recipe that we'll be making today is mashed cauliflower. So probably in my opinion, mashed potatoes are probably the most common um, prepared meal during Thanksgiving, just because we get to add all of our fats and, and salt and especially our cheeses. But today I'm gonna to show you a different way to substitute cauliflower for the potatoes to cut our carbs um, while also getting the same flavors just like our other recipes. Okay, so I've already boiled the cauliflower. And again, just like the sweet potatoes for time purposes, we decrease the scale of the recipe. Okay, so I'm going to get a 
my butter. You can also go dairy free with this by using dairy free butter. Hey, so patient with me because we're going to use an immersion blender today. And these are always very fun to use. If you don't have one of these, you can use a food processor or a blender or just a potato masher. We are just going to try it out. If this works, it's going to be a miracle. Just being honest. So we can kind of see it matching. To, I'm going to spoon, just because we have a little ex extra liquid left over, I'm going to spoon them into a bowl and top them with some fresh thyme. And before we do that, I'm going to add some salt, pepper. You can also add garlic or whatever seasonings you would like. Okay, we'll do one more. Okay. So I'm just going to spoon them in. So it ends up looking exactly like mashed potatoes. And you can obviously see how many times cauliflower is used to substitute for um, our heavy starches like rices and um, even pizza crust, things like that. So it ends up looking like this. We're just gonna top it with some fresh chives. There we go. That's your mashed cauliflower. Okay, so we've done uh, roasted sweet potatoes. We've done mashed cauliflower and green bean casserole. One recipe that I've included in your packet that's I believe on the back is another option instead of pumpkin pie. I know personally in my own family we're not super pumpkin pie fans um, so we like to use other dessert recipes instead. So the one I've included is a blueberry pie and I've made it for you already today so you can see the finished product. But this is, um, this is such a great recipe because I use almond flour, walnuts, oatmeal, and maple syrup for the crust, as well as for the base, fresh blueberries um, with maple syrup and cornstarch, I believe, a couple more. Um, ingredients, but this is great for, again, your gluten-free, your dairy-free um, family members, or just a healthier option than some of our sugar-loaded, our processed sugar-loaded um, recipes that we tend to find um, when it comes to the holiday season. So I hope today was enjoyable for you. I hope that you got some good ideas um, about your Thanksgiving holidays. I know that I do not like to ruin a whole year worth of um, trying to be my healthier self just on one day. And I just wanted to show you guys how you can still make healthy food delicious. Um, so yeah, that's all I have. Thanks so much, Jordan. Um, for everybody watching, I'm posting a session evaluation link in the chat. It just takes a minute or two 
to fill out. And that provides Jordan with really valuable feedback. Um, I wanna highlight that this is a student driven event. Jordan plans this, presents this, she creates the booklet. So Dr. Landry and I are just here as a support. So this is, this is really um, a really awesome opportunity for Jordan to hone her professional skill set. So any feedback you have, positive or negative, is always appreciated. We'll share that with her. We'll share that with Jordan. Um, the other thing is, I'm going to share my screen and show you all um, how to claim your lifestyle rewards for this session. You get five points. Give me a moment here. It's coming up. And here it is. So if you'll just snap a screenshot or a snip or a photo on your cell phone, if you use the mobile app, that'll work just great. Um, don't send it to me. Load it up to your account on My Health Check 360 to get your five points. A reminder that uh, Be Well's uh, new program year just started on November 1st. So this is a great opportunity to start earning those points for this new program year. And let me see. Oh, and I should mention, if you're watching this recorded, you can still get your points the same way. Just go ahead and snap a photo here or a screenshot and load that up. It counts for you as well. Thank you all for joining us today. We will stick around for just a couple more minutes to answer any questions. Um, and we will be having another one of these in, no, um, sorry, not in November. We're already here um, in December, right before Christmas. We'll do a holiday themed uh, cooking demo. And I look forward to that. Thank you again, Jordan. We'll see y'all later. Have a great afternoon.